Amarawa Hopa, thank you for joining us. We begin in Alaska, where tribal leaders are gathering for a major conference. The National Congress of American Indians is hosting its mid-year gathering in Anchorage. This is the first time NCAI is holding an all-in-person conference since the start of COVID. Major topics include pandemic recovery and climate change. The meeting will also serve as a place to pass resolutions by the Congress's members. Already, the gathering has had a hiccup. The day before the conference started, news organization Indians.com reported that the organization's CEO, Dante Desiderio, had been suspended. The day after, NCAI said Desiderio was on temporary administrative leave. NCAI President Fawn Sharp said the organization was not in a position to share more information and wants others to respect his privacy. This year's event is titled Thinking Beyond Self-Determination and will last four days. In Connecticut, sports teams are getting new mascots that aren't native. West Hartford's Board of Education recently changed the mascots of two high schools. Representatives of the town's Corporation Council say the decision is in line with local, state, and federal policies concerning equity and diversity. The change comes despite a lawsuit filed in an attempt to keep the school's former native-themed mascot. Connard High School's athletic teams will now be known as the Red Wolves, and Hall High School is now the Titans. A new state law requires municipalities to receive written support from a state or federally recognized tribe in Connecticut. Any school whose athletic teams use native mascots or names risk losing state funding. And that funding is created with revenue from the state's two tribal casinos, the Mohegan Sun and Foxwoods Resort Casino. In Oregon, the state is paying college costs for tribal citizens attending schools within its borders. Enrolled citizens of the nine federally recognized tribes in Oregon now qualify for a grant that will cover most or all higher education costs. The state legislature funded the Oregon Tribal Student Grant Program to the tune of $19 million for the 2022 academic year. Maximum grants will cover the average cost of attendance. That includes things like tuition, books, and housing. Housing. Around 700 tribal citizens are expected to take part in the program. The aim is to reduce financial barriers that contribute to low college attendance and completion rates among Native people. Backers of the program hope the lawmakers will extend it to 2023. While volcanic cones near a peak sacred to tribes are getting protections in New Mexico, along with ceremonial ties, wild, wildlife and plants provided sustenance for indigenous communities traveling to the area. The years-long effort received a major boost on June 2nd. It is located at present-day El Bar Ranch near Mount Taylor, west of Albuquerque. National Conservation Group Trust for Public Land announced that additional acreage is being set aside for wildlife, cultural preservation, and recreation. The total cost is $34 million. The goal is to increase green spaces, improve access to outdoor recreation, and reduce the risk of wildfires as the pressures of climate change out. Acoma Governor Randall Vicente says he would like the tribal nation to conduct an ethnographic study to identify areas, locations, and cultural sites. An access plan is being created for areas important to the pueblos of Acoma, Laguna, and Zuni, as well as the Hopi and Navajo. Well, here's a pick-me-up. Every other June, Juneau, Alaska is filled with Native people of all ages for an event called Celebration. Part of this year's event included some cute faces. Take a look. It's been made by Alberta Aska. Aska. The event was part of the Toddler Regalia Review. These Alaska Native youth are bringing their cultures to life. 